Hello everyone. So it's uh, 5 p.m. but I think uh, still people are uh, joining. So we'll take maybe say five more minutes and uh, wait if someone else is also going to join. Uh, what do you think, Anmol? Guys, is my voice audible to all? Yes. Hello. Let everyone join the session then we will start within next five minutes. So uh, I'm actually uh, of doing a Q&A session because uh, there are already uh, videos available where I've shared the strategy. Uh, otherwise, it will be a big monologue uh, where I'm simply taking my preparation. So I'll just give an introduction uh, that my name is Pooja S. Rajan and I have secured uh, AIR 108. And uh, this was my second attempt. My optional was anthropology and my Graduation background was uh, computer science engineering, and uh, this was my um, like this was my second attempt. In my first attempt, I couldn't clear prelims uh, because of the CSAT paper. So I'll be having a Q and A session where you can ask your uh, queries, to me and I'll try to address them from my limited experience and knowledge. Okay, so guys, uh, as we are conducting this Q and A session. So you can raise your hand, then I can name you so that you can unmute your mic and ask any question. Yes, Rohit, you can ask. Well, first of all, thank you very much, sir and ma'am, for organizing the session and giving your precious time. Sir, please ask so, the question. Um, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And my question is, can we, <clears throat> can we prepare anthropology by self-study and what are the challenges which you face during the preparation of, while preparing anthropology and pro and pro of cons of choosing anthropology? Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, uh, so when it comes to anthropology, um, the reasons why I chose the optional was, one thing I went through the syllabus of uh, multiple optionals, like I had shortlisted. Uh, sub, sub optionals and I went through the syllabus of all those optionals and I found like um, since I have a very good uh, background in biology uh, and I have scored well in the you know 12th exam I was really interested in biology and in anthropology deals uh, with genetics and some biology portions are there and I have also have some background in anatomy and physiology so I was pretty sure that I could draw, draw diagrams and that I'll be having a uh, you know what, I'll be uh, having some advantage over others when it comes to physical anthropology. And then the rest of the syllabus is very interesting. I really wanted to know what it was about. Uh, so that's the reason, that's the primary reason why I decided to choose anthropology. But then when looking at the practical aspects, uh, we need to look into the coaching. So from Trivandrum, I couldn't um, find any coaching institutes that were offering uh, quality uh, classes at that point of time. Uh, but at the same time, the you know the uh, the subject was doing really well. Uh, we were having so much toppers, and uh, then I have heard that uh, most of the toppers are doing it by self study. And um, again, uh, when it comes to the community, uh, there was a growing community of anthropology, and again, so much materials are available online. So these are some of the reasons for choosing anthropology. And basically, coming to self study because I faced a lot of challenges. But see, everybody, when, you know, when someone is telling self-study, everybody will not be having the same circumstances. Some people will be, you know, having the graduation in the subject and then they're doing the self-study. Or, you know, uh, they might have taken help at some point, but still we will say it's a self-study. So in my case, when I chose anthropology, I knew a person who had given two to three names with andro. So he was there to guide me by telling, you know, you can do this first, then you can do that, or, or to clear my doubts from his understanding. So his paper one was strong, he used to get around 150, 160, in those days, you know, when the, the optional was scoring around 300, was a very common thing. So he used to get around 150, 160 paper one, so I could trust him. So he was there. Uh, that is a major factor for me to self-study route, because I knew someone who had given means. Um, then again, after, uh, you know, 
failing my first prelims i had enrolled for uh, anthropology test series and uh, i was uh, really close with bala sir that i could ask him questions he used to send me some of his uh, you know some of his classes if i had doubt in the concept so there used to be some help from someone who was from anthropology background even though i have not taken up proper coaching so this is one thing because when you're looking at the cons there will be so much areas where you need conceptual understanding that um, you know we may not be able to grasp just by reading for instance uh, some you know topics like say post modernism uh, or if you have gained some conceptual understanding you might need someone to you know just ask whether what you understood is right or wrong because uh, in this paper, in this examination like in all the papers what i believe is that we need you know knowledge uh, in that application level we need to apply the knowledge we are learning so that application comes only with pure understanding like we are very confident then we will say you know this we can use there or this example we can use somewhere else those kind of interlinkages or you know using one one particular example in multiple instances those kind of things comes with pure understanding alone so sometimes we might need someone to reassure that that understanding we have gained is correct sometimes our understanding will be wrong then again we need someone to tell us it is wrong and we shouldn't write like that so i really believe that we need a mentor or a former uh, formal guide even if we are doing it by self study otherwise we'll waste a lot of time preparing yes uh, i think uh, aman has raised uh, the hand so he can ask the question yeah, now unmute your mic and ask your any question Yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, are VAD ICS notes uh, enough for uh, anthropology optional? So actually, I have not referred such notes at all, but I have read his book in search of ourselves. So that was really useful for getting understanding in socio-cultural anthropology. But again, when it comes to the content part, uh, what I did was I gained. primary understanding from the book and then i used the socio cultural anthropology encyclo encyclopedia uh, on socio cultural anthropology and i was taking content from there right directly so that there will be some quality oh thank you ma'am is there any other there's only one pathshala materials available this are really good epg pathshala okay, okay ma'am Krishni Bhavan Kumar Vijay, any of you have any doubt? Ma'am, I have read your telegram. Ma'am, can you suggest your uh, books list, ma'am? Resources for prelims and mains, especially in geography and economics. So actually, the reason why I have not published my book list anywhere is it is just the basics. I have not not done anything extra for geography. i have only referred uh, these ncrts are there no 11th 12th ncrts along with 8th 9th 10th i have given a preliminary read um that's all i have did and i have also read the gc leon but i did not make any notes that was not my primary reference but uh, out of curiosity i read the book i think i read it two three times so something might have got internalized into my head and that knowledge i might have used in both prelims and mains but uh, this was the my limited uh, resources for uh, geography and for mains uh, initially i also referred uh, um, one material is there pm is it uh, yes, some pm pmrf pmf ias my dear pmf ias yes those materials also i had used uh but uh, towards the end i did not read much from these but probably the understanding i gained from these materials in the initial days were helpful because some of which might might have got internalized because geography is so conceptual again when it comes to economics i did not like shankar ganesh or i couldn't understand ramesh singh so i was following only sri ram ias material there is one book available sri ram ias i was doing just random googling and i was asking my doubts to my economics sir and my mentors and i was simply following sri ram is and for the compilation i did pt365 for current affairs along with the newspapers thank you ma'am 
हेलो मैम हाउ कैन यू मैनेज मैम करंट अफेयर टाइम मैनेजमेंट एंड जीएस एंड ऑफ मैम हाउ यू मैनेज टाइम Okay, so time management, especially during the first year when you are doing a PCM, will be very, very tricky. So one thing I decided three. This that was another reason why I did not go for optional coaching because um, for me personally, if I go for class say six hours a day, then the rest of the day I won't feel like studying. So I decided I'll just take GS coaching. So I had morning nine to one I had class. So I'll uh, just go for. the class like i'll probably wake up at 7 o'clock read the newspaper then just go to the class come back and from 2 o'clock i start studying optional so from 2 to 6 or till 7 pm i'll be studying my optionals then from 7 pm onwards um, until the pro, you know the subject is over i'll be doing the gs portions and also just go through the class notes and then go attend that uh, you know text based class but when the Because there might be some who are repeating, so you have the whole day, and you have already done your piece. So I'll just brief what I did after the classes were over and my second attempt. So some of the times I'll simply study optional, like from morning till evening I'll be doing optional. Then I'll just do the current affairs. That might just take one and a half hours or sometimes two hours. Um, but that was it. But around uh, six to eight hours I'll do. optional itself then i used to do this then uh, sometimes i at some days you no know, like you know suppose one month i decided to do archaeology from paper 1 anthropology paper 2 and paper 1 and paper 2 then that one whole month i won't be doing any gs i'll be focusing on optional but when i'm suppose say i planning to finish gs 2 then that month i'll the more focus will be on gs so the whole day maybe i'll do paper 1 and then uh, you know i'll just do the current affairs and end it i won't even do optional so it was more or less like uh, what like it depended upon my mood and what my time table was thank you ma'am but one one question is that how how can i utilize maximum news from youtube for because many questions are come interconnected past and uh, current wise so how can we maximum utilize from youtube ma'am Understand that question. Can you please repeat it? Actually, he is asking regarding how to expect uh, news from the newspaper regarding the UPSC. Okay, again, uh, see how to paper. That is something I myself could not understand in the initial year of preparation. Like I made notes, but they were of no use. Um, so, see, one thing is there. We are reading newspaper on a continuous basis. that is definitely adding up to our knowledge in a very you know uh, you know at a very subconscious level that is there but apart from that we also need to collect things from the newspaper so one shortcut i did was i was listening to rao ias uh, daily news analysis on a daily basis then i used to make notes out of it and the notes will be very crisp uh, and it will be just you know i'll just write the topic heading put it in a double line uh, so that it looks like a heading then i'll just jot down the content from the video i'll be putting the video in 2x and listening and i'll be jotting it down uh, then i used to collect this and keep so i had three notebooks for one year from january 2021 i collected until january now november 2021 i did this exercise and um, simultaneously after clearing prelim and even before that when i was doing gs subjects i was taking this notebook and i was uh, you know compiling it into the gs notes whatever i was collecting from current affairs this was especially for me and another thing i did was that sometimes you know even this dns will not be covering something but we will we will actually feel that this is important for instance there was an article by ashish nandi he is a sociologist he had given an article in the hindu and it was talking about uh, this uh, you know how that india is not a salad bowl or like a, you know those i think it's a, i think two example usually we say salad bowl or some other reference is there now i'm not able to remember uh, but india is not both india is just a thali meal because we have all the distinct varieties uh, but we keep our own boundaries we are not merging with each we with each other so this was his idea so this i jotted down from the newspaper editorial and i kept it because i can easily use this in society answers or in anthropology and stuff similarly there was an interview by uh, aisha majid uh, she is a tribal council leader from uh, nicobar so she was talking about the, the you know the problems of tribals after uh, the tsunami you know after the tsunami has hit their island 
and they were relocated and there were so much issues in the interventions they were given because they were not from the and you know the viewpoint of a tribal society so this i used to uh, write as a case study uh, you know in paper 2 of anthropology so this is again i got from my uh, you know from newspaper reading itself but i would simply jot down these points and keep so that i can recollect it any time now also i am recollecting it uh, but see i am not up to date or anything but i am able to recollect so these kind of things i used to collect from the newspaper again i if i am right there was a survey uh, that was talking about that was revealing that uh, you know there was so much uh, religious uh, differences uh, that uh, there was so much you know hidden uh, differences that uh, people were revealing in some survey that survey was in the news uh, you know you know around this october september october month if i'm not if i'm correct uh, so uh, that there were lots of articles based on this uh, survey and uh, so many uh, you know statistics we could uh, collect from the newspaper so i used to collect these statistics and keep and this also i used to write uh, liberally in all so you know social angles and whatever society paper or uh, paper 2 of anthropology where, wherever i could you know write this i used to quote these examples okay thank you ma'am uh, guys one thing i want to mention if there is any disruption in the meeting we can join through the same link So the disruption. If there is any disruption in the meeting, we can join through the same link. We can join through the same link. Similar link. Same link. Same link. Maybe more it's not clear. I do not. I am having issues from my side. No, no. Actually, I am saying that if it happens, it will be explained. I am actually I am not here properly. Okay. Ma'am, so, sometimes this meeting get disrupted. Like time is nine, uh, time, nine minutes remaining, so that's why. Oh, okay. So, ma'am, my question is to you, ma'am, for the anthropology. Uh, ma'am, uh, I'm preparing on my own, ma'am. Uh, but sometimes it feels like uh, something is missing. Like there is no, no one to validate if you're doing wrong, doing wrong or right. So, ma'am, what did, you, what was your approach, ma'am? Did you join any test series, like in, in, in the very start or post films, ma'am? i had already briefed about it because initially we cannot join in test series because uh, there's no you won't write good answers we have to first complete the syllabus uh, but at the same time we need someone who's experienced to tell us what the the track we are going is right or wrong so for my case i had i know someone who i was who was giving mains so occasionally i used to talk with him and i used to you know uh, show him some of my answers and then he would give me some things like that so while i was preparing for the you know first phase of uh, like going through the syllabus and making notes for the first time he was helping me okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am uh, ma'am another thing is ma'am uh, what was your answer writing approach ma'am like how did you approach answer writing so actually i have uh, shared some of my uh, papers uh, andro paper are you specifically asking about andro or about gs Ma'am, for whole ma'am, GHS also. For GHS as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine, fine. So, uh, see, uh, one of uh, one of the few things that I kept in mind was um, we only have limited space, and we have to address the question to the point because, but this is very cliche thing, and people still don't understand what is this addressing to the question to the point. that is simply that you have asked me what was my answer writing strategy and if i am talking about uh, you know how i prepared or how to prepare some subject i am not addressing your answer i mean i am not addressing your question i am talking about something else and you have asked something else so that shouldn't happen when it comes to answer writing that is the rule of thumb like even if you are low on content if your answer looks like addressing the question you will get some marks but if you are a high on content uh, even if you are high on content and uh, you know your answer just feels like you have dumped everything you know about that content then you will definitely get below average marks so one thing was that i used to read the question once or twice i used to read the question i used to divide the question into different parts like uh, from most questions you know they'll start with a statement then there will be some comma and then they'll be asking a question so first we have to focus on the statement what the statement is asking like suppose one question is telling even though this and that we are still failing behind 
discuss some of the issues that we are like suppose even though india is uh, you know uh, in the forefront uh, when it comes to sustainable development uh, we are still uh, you know failing behind uh, falling behind developed countries so uh, you know for discuss some of the issues that india is facing in sustainable development and uh, you know uh, suggest some measures suppose this is a 15 15 mark question so most of us will start talking about what is sustainable development what are the issues and what are the so we'll just leave the initial statement as such but what we have to do is we have to first start the pro- uh, you know the answer in such a way that we are addressing that first statement where we are telling that india is doing good in sustainable development so we can say say that you know india is in track to achieve that sdg goals as per this and this report that will be the first thing then we will talk about but there are still some issues then we will write the issues then we'll go to the you know steps taken then we'll go for way forward there is a go to the even if it is a mark question or a 10 mark question and the question completely gets addressed so this will definitely reflect in your marks that is one thing second thing is obviously content so you you have to write more points and write you know with very less words uh, but the point has to be conveyed so that is that is one thing we can in one word i can call it as articulation so you have to be very articulate that whatever you are telling the person who is reading it is able to understand and you don't have to use so many words to do that you just have to use four or five words but the person can understand it so so you have to work on your articulation skills again introduction you just keep a rule of thumb that it shouldn't go more than three lines then conclusion also shouldn't go more than two to three lines like that you can keep some rule of thumb and if there is some sub dimension suppose there are two sub dimensions in that question and it's a 10 marker question maybe you can write six points in one sub dimension so 6 plus 6 12 points will be there apart from intro and conclusion so like this uh, use your common sense and increase the number of points according to the question that is being asked and bring so many sub dimension uh, this is one thing i wanted to tell you know in full general studies uh, what i did and how my approach was uh, this is one thing uh, then again presentation is very important so you have to write in such a way that whoever is correcting they are not missing out the points that you want to highlight so people tell underline i am telling you put it in boxes because boxes get more visibility and you know that prioritize prioritize what you should put in box and what you should underline see i used to put all the subheadings in boxes and then i used to underline nouns uh, or facts and figures and facts and figures i used to put it in a smaller box again so that they get highlighted so in this way i, I focused on presentation structuring and content all three are important and then paper completion that is again you know that's a uh, that's a prime thing so this is what i did for gs and when it comes to anthropology specifically uh, for 10 markers i used to focus like you know for one thing i understood is that the 10 markers are real deal breakers like you have to complete the paper you shouldn't write one and a half pages because then the examiner is clearly understanding that we don't know the topic uh, or even if you know the topic and you think you have very little content you will get less marks than someone who have finished the paper so you have to write in the you know end our paper that is given uh even if you are having content sometimes some have small handwriting and they will finish in one and a half paper but you know when you are looking at from the percep- perception view point uh, if you are writing one and a half it feels like you are less on content even if you have content so you can focus on presentation again there then try to bring so many subheadings at least five to six subheadings suppose there is one introduction then you can give suppose because in andro they just simply ask the topic like lamarckism then you can give a definition definition a standard definition with a thinker uh, with a year and with a book name this is commonly uh, you know everybody everybody knows this but very less people still write uh, you know they still do hesitate to learn the year and write all those but they make a huge difference then you can write about you know postulates uh, then in this particular case you can write about significance you can write about criticism Then you can talk about contemporary relevance. So these kind of subheadings, you just learn few and keep like limitations, like advantages, demerits, merits, demerits. So these subheadings, you just uh, internalize them, and wherever uh, you can use, you simply use them. So this you can do for ten marks, and uh, your marks in the ten marks will increase. This will again put up good, per, you know, good impression in the evaluator because they are seeing the ten markers first. Then they are going to the fifteen and twenty marks. so there again the same uh, you know strategy i used to follow and then i used to draw maps wherever necessary uh, 
all those things i used to add uh, but there used to be so many uh, you know sub headings in my answers generally paper for paper ds papers and uh, andro papers okay ma'am okay thank you is there any particular strategy you want to suggest for the ds for ethics ds for ethics yeah uh, ethics i have scored 199 marks uh to my surprise of course because uh, i was doing uh, not very well in ethics during my uh, you know prelims pains gap because uh, see for uh, case studies i was faring well so the tip i can give for case studies read the entire case study very carefully and there will be so many minute things given like you know an honest officer or uh, very very minute things might have happened like maybe and that may not be related to the uh, bigger case that is being asked or the bigger issue but there might be some minor case that might be having some connection later something like that will be there uh, like suppose i am telling suppose uh, there's a question where um, you know some uh, i think this was an actual question or some mock question so uh, there's an office so so uh, some uh, you know abuse is going on there and uh, whoever is in charge of that orphanage uh, that person is corrupted and uh, there is some political linkage and uh, so then the police officer had uh, filed a complaint but um, he is also facing some uh, you know blackmails and all uh, from some goons who are involved and then uh, you as a, a collector or an is officer uh, you are also you have also got calls that if you keep quiet then um, you know they'll give you some cash or something um, like uh, those kind of uh, things are there in the question so here the case as you know is about that is you know sex racket happening in an orphanage so uh, your case study obviously has to address how you will be dealing with it but you should also talk about the fact that a police officer an honest police officer is not able to do the work uh, because he is being blackmailed so that has to be addressed what will you do to you know resolve that how will you help that person then you are also getting uh, calls for bribe so how will you deny that that you have to write so in this way you have to uh, you know address all the minute you know unethical things that the question has spoken about my address all of them that is one thing then what you can do is you bring some of this ethical values that we have learned like accountability responsibility you know commitment to public service compassion and empathy those keywords you please bring to your uh, ethics case studies so this you can take from the syllabus directly and then again there are these words like golden mean aristotle's golden mean or those kind of some terms you just use the terms that you have internalized throughout the process there might be some terms no like i used the word uh, golden mean all the time uh, so such similar terms you can uh, write it in your case studies maybe five six terms you study and give somewhere you will be able to use that is one thing i want to talk about case studies then when it comes to the 10 markers again i used to initially i used to just dump all the ethics uh, you know theory content just by looking at you know the question will be asking something but i'll just see the word say suppose it is attitudinal change then i'll just see the word attitudinal change and then i'll start defining attitude i'll start writing what is attitudinal change then how you can bring attitudinal change my question will go like that and there will be so much examples and all but the question will be asking about something else so then i realized this is by getting below average marks so then i started addressing exactly what is being asked in the question and in order to explain those things i will give examples so you can just go through some of my ethics answers that are given in the telegram channel so you will get an understanding about what i'm trying to say like suppose a question is telling uh, so like you know attitude to change can be brought through uh, you know it has to come from internally Uh, not by bringing you know some external changes so then i have to talk about how you know there are some examples where externally attitudinal change has been you know people have tried to change like for example uh, swachh bharat mission is there there are so many advertisements and they are giving so many incentives for building toilets so but then again nobody is using the toilets which means that is not working so that is that external mechanism did not work at the same time internally uh, what like what they are doing they are again telling it is you know if they are connecting the toilet with uh, you know women's dignity so then people are internally thinking about it and they are also able to understand there is some change so this way they are uh, bringing change 
so there uh, so that example you can put i mean now i just used one particular example throughout the thing but otherwise also you can write so you can tell both sides how externally we can bring attitudinal change how internally we can bring how that internal change is more sustainable than the external change some somewhat in this line the whole uh, answer will look like and there will be at least three to four examples so this is one thing you can do uh, for ethics specifically and i used to write daily uh, at least four five answers there um, that prelims means yeah because i was uh, coding behind in ethics so this helped me immensely so if you are writing means this year you can start practicing daily uh, just keep writing just make sure that you are addressing the question and you are having uh, enough examples in your answers so that it's very relatable and understandable also rosa like i have gone through many topers copy so most of them had mentioned the context like uh, objectivity without compassion so they have mentioned the example with that so according to you they had prepared the example in advance in their notes or they are uh, like random examples so see some examples i by heart read like for instance servants instance like the uh, army who you know constructed the road through public funding right those examples i had uh, you know i had to by heart because how in how on earth will we know all these things like let's be just practical <laughs> like we can't um, re suddenly recollect uh, some civil servants who have done something like when some examples we will we will internalize like i mean in my case we have one collector prashant uh, here uh, so when he was uh, the district collector in calicut he used to do this uh, operation uh, operation sulaimani i don't know if you are aware of it uh, this is a very successful like, Uh, you know um, thing here in kerala so i i could remember this so anyway like, so this was basically someone will pay extra when they are dining out in some restaurants and this restaurants will give food, free food to for those who are in need of it so uh, this is something that happened and when it happened i was there i was aware of it so this is something i have internalized so i can use it again. other examples obviously i have to by heart and keep otherwise i won't remember but there are other examples that like you know we can take from non civil service examples as well like right like suppose how this michael phelps uh, how he became a good swimmer there might be some examples that will stick with you like how and frank was you know uh, you know be positive and how how she was productive through writing diaries even when you know she was going through great app grave atrocities and uh, so these kind of examples they stick with me because throughout my life uh, these are examples that i have collected that i have picked up and internalized so these examples used to come easily to me and even like this perception question i wrote about how this you remember maggie was uh, you know closed shut down after some issues but later you know when they came back they were showing in their advertisement like how their factories are so clean like they were showing the picture where you know videos where how their this man maggi was manufactured so slowly slowly now everybody is taking maggi again so that perception changed no so this is something i just i could recollect when i was writing the answer i did not study it and keep or anything but while writing mocks it just came to me and i just wrote them and regarding uh, quotation portion how you dealing with them quotation questions so basically i do better in ls compared to gss so quotations i used to take it like a you know philosophical essay but i have to write it in two pages so i used to bring so much dimensions like i used to uh, like i used to take the you know quotation first thing would be i have to explain what it is first paragraph then i would explain more, like i would ask more questions like how why when you know all those questions then that quotation will gradually expand because there will be so much insight into this into that like suppose something suppose a quotation can you just uh, just say a quotation mm -hmm. i am very bad at quotations i have never used anywhere so any i can't any regarding the fear we can use and any quotation regarding fear like usme value aata hai na in any quotation we have certain values so i am saying if we have any quotation regarding fear quotation regarding fear 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 no i am unable to understand can you just type it in the chat or something don't uh, do not be afraid to give up the good 
to go for the grade you know can you just type it and uh, send it or oh, do not be afraid to give up the good for the great so okay so the question so basically they are talking about uh, we shouldn't uh, ignore the simple things uh, thinking that we will be able to uh, achieve better things right that is that what that quotation will be meaning so that basic introduction i'll be giving what it means so then i'll be writing about you know why some people think that you know they will uh, leave the simple things behind and they go after great things like how some people for example i'll say how a person who is so much career driven he is ignoring the personal lives and you know chasing the career uh, but you know they might face some personal death so this is some example i just came up on the spot so similarly you can also come up some something very simple but very relatable right at the same time at some things you know at some times we have to so then i said one thing so uh, so this is again i am telling how why like you know or how people are going after great things then i can tell why why do we go after great things because we get social recognition uh, then you know uh, we get uh, we get personal satisfaction then what uh, we'll get more mon monetary benefits or people have different reason for chasing great things so that i can explain then i can also explain about you know uh, why it is sometimes necessary to go after great things that we shouldn't settle with good things like uh, you know uh, like if, then there you can give maybe you know uh, some uh, great examples like um, how uh, you know this mark zuckerberg he was in uh, some prestigious college no harvard or somewhere harvard i guess okay. he decided to stop the, uh, facebook so he was already in a good place but he felt that he can do more so he was ready to give, give up that and then he was doing something great so i'm contradicting the statement as well So I'm telling at some also be doing the other way. Then only we'll have great men, uh, you know, in the world. So greatness is also needed, but we have to make the choice where we have to, you know, chase you the greatness that. and stay with the good things. So my conclusion will be in somewhat in this way. Way, and I will also talk about how we can balance both. How we can not give up good things and still chase the good great. So I am just coming up with different dimensions. we just have to uh, you know compress this and write for 10 marks that's it so these kind of different ways in which if you have one statement in front of you you just have to juggle the sentences uh, negate it uh, all those things you can do and ask some questions then you will have so much dimensions right. then the trouble will mm -hmm. yeah so connect all these dimensions okay so guys uh, any other doubts you have you can raise your hand and ask for any doubt i think junaid was asking about economy and quality uh, i just saw in the chat section is junaid still here no he left the meeting okay so roja i want to ask how did you define your upsc journey like what were the mistakes and take away according to you from the upsc journey yeah okay so so basically my case uh I, when i started to prepare i was very impatient i wanted to clear in one attempt i was um, like basically I, i was not being arrogant but i was like very impatient like i couldn't wait i felt like uh, you know age is um, going i have to do this fast uh, like people are starting after 21 years and i'm starting after, i think i when i started i was 24 so uh, so then i i was very impatient that was one thing uh, then um, in the first year i was so much into studies that i literally sacrificed my uh, personal life completely so what happened and i was idolizing the exam like anything like i i used to you know fantasize writing prelims i was so much into this exam i was so much in love with this exam uh, that my friends used to say you know upsc is your boyfriend now <laughs> so i used to i was so much uh, into that you know that fantasy level but then when i couldn't uh, when then when the, when the prelims happened i i couldn't clear prelims and then the entire idolizing it flipped i just hated the exam i couldn't find a reason 
to go through this much uh, mental struggle mental pressure to give this exam once more i hated the exam like anything those who know me know very well that i used to say i don't want to write this exam it's a very sadistic process i don't want to go through this like that i was crying almost every day after not clearing prelim so the, this is one thing i understood we shouldn't be in the extreme we should be able to moderate our preparation like we have to give we are still living we, there's still life left we are very young so we should also uh, you know give some time for life so just after failing prelims i went for a goa trip <laughs> so uh, that is there <laughs> we need to give him life because uh, you know life goes on after you know regardless of everything life goes on so that was one thing second thing i understood was that uh, i had this you know exam anxiety i i couldn't sleep when this exam is closed i used to think about all sorts of uh, you know negative things in which i can do in the exam but in my first attempt what happened is that usually on during the exam i don't get stressed i don't do any uh, you know stupid things and then like you know not marking in the omr or uh, double marking or like you know like you know some people they will uh, start writing something then they'll have to strike and they have to write again then they will waste a lot of lot of time or not completing the paper i have never done those kind of things before upsc of course but in my first attempt uh, i i was you know solving the paper uh, question paper 90 questions i solved in one hour so i was very chill i was like okay fine took cc then i started marking then i couldn't find the you know courage to mark in the omr sheet like i'm like what if this is wrong what if this is wrong i i lose marks uh, i'll be losing uh, like how much uh, around two marks no for if wrong two by three yeah so two by three marks will be lose um I, i was so worried like so so it will like see suppose we are, our attempt is 50 and 10 marks is wrong so that had the 10 marks been right that will also we'll think no when we are reducing the marks so we'll lose more than two marks if the answer is wrong uh, so i was so worried that i attempted only 79 questions so this was one thing i was so scared to mark and time management everything uh, you know i i just lost control of everything i could only do 79 questions then um, after doing 79 questions i came out i told that i failed i did not wait for answer key i did not uh, wait for csat exam to get over i just told my parents that i am not clearing this exam i have to write write it one more i am done let's go home and they said no 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 you have to write csat also <laughs> exam is examination is not over if you at least want to know the marks you have to write csat paper so then okay i took one hour to just you know lament that i wasted one attempt but uh, then the next one hour i was simply chilling then because i anyways failed so i decided to fail even before the exam and then i ruined my csat paper one i was having enough marks to clear but i failed in csat uh, there i failed uh, you know epically i i got only 55 marks uh, that was basically because of uh, you know this laziness it's not laziness i was very laid back because i was anyways not going to clear no so i thought 66 i'll definitely get uh, what is the need to fight for it so that's another thing i wanted to say until 4:30 please fight for it please please, please fight for your uh, exam until it's over because otherwise you'll have to wait one more attempt if you make any exam many any mistakes in the exam hall you'll uh, pay for it great that was second thing third thing life you know life is there life goes on as i said so there will be so much uh, you know that will come up in you know in this exam and i'm telling you most of the toppers were cleared they have had like huge Uh, you know really bad uh, things happening to them uh, with climate while they were clearing so in um, in my case uh, just before prelims i was the we had covid in my whole house and my father was hospitalized for 20 days and then uh, like the, we were not able to diagnose what was wrong with him so it was really bad he was seriously ill for 20 days that was just but even just you know two to three weeks before uh, prelims then i was also having uh, covid induced asthma Uh, and i couldn't take uh, medicines so then i was also hospitalized then i will fight with them i'll come out so i i never really prepared for prelims in the second attempt because i was mostly and hospitalized and then i will be fighting with them and then coming out telling that i have to prepare so all those things happened and then i thought i won't clear but i still cleared so i i want to tell that even when all hope is lost you know miracles can happen and i think really then when all hope is lost lost is when miracles happen so please don't give up thinking that your situation is really bad or you have given n number of attempts and you are not making it please don't give up because it's really worth it the you know the post results life is really worth living 
you are really you know if you really want to get into the service it's really worth living living so please don't give up prematurely but suppose you have a very genuine reason and you think that is this exam is taking toll on your mental health and you know physical health and you know other aspects of your life you can definitely give up and you know it's not about giving up it's about closing it and starting something new fresh that is also there you don't have to just stick with one thing uh, if you think it is impractical too impractical for you so that's the again one thing i learned uh, then again you know uh, you can do some you know, part time job or find some backup and um if you have anxiety or if you have uh, if you have you know continuous thoughts about what you will do if you don't clear so i was working as a content writer a uh, part time content writer so that used to give me some peace of mind uh, yes sorry to give me some peace of mind so we can do this i also these sorts of things uh, while we are preparing whatever that keeps us peace of mind so that we can uh, you know prepare peacefully uh, and you know, put in our full effort and uh, i don't know there will be so much misconceptions like you know uh, first mains is only for trial first prelims is for trial first interviews for trial please don't fall into any of this you only need one attempt there are many people who are clearing they are not exceptional they just figured out what is there to be done because most of the times we will take so much attempts to figure out what is exactly that needs to be done but if you can take some mentors or some seniors who have already given the attempt they can definitely help you you don't need a topper to tell you what they what you need to do a uh, a person who have went till interview is more than enough uh, so then you just have to listen to them figure out what needs to be done just do it in one main one interview you, you can clear it uh, so don't keep any such misconceptions so rosa as you have no how so how did you overcome all these things and uh, if you analyze your things like uh, what worked for you like you mentioned regarding some magic happened so which some and like we are then the looking retrospectively uh, i think um, expressing our emotions and accepting the situation works like in my case i used to call someone who was very close and i used to you know just cry and tell them that my life is a disaster that i've made all the wrong choices in my life <laughs> nothing is going to work out so i used to cry like that like um, and if someone is asking how are you i'll say i am breathing <laughs> what more i fine or not i used to feel very numb but i think we just have to express it because you know uh, you know I, this is too cliche to tell but i have re- read it in my name if you cry you know for two three days continuously you will get fed up of crying then you will feel like doing something else so that really works that really works for me and if you think you don't have anyone you know the skiran helpline i called them twice uh, because my dog had died and my father was hospitalized and i was having asthma and i had exam in 10 days so i had called kiran helpline and i just told the person that uh, you know whatever i wanted to tell and that person was very listening so some will tell me you are fortunate to have friends so you you called your friends you can call kiran helpline it is free of cost <laughs> the government is providing it you can talk to them they'll help you uh then again you know then so this is one thing emotionally we just have to express ourselves and find relief another thing you can do is uh, this again i understood very lately that physical exercise actually that you know when people used to tell this i never took it seriously so if you do some exercise some hormone gets released and you will actually feel better so i started dancing so that was really helpful uh, then again you know the sleep issues so i couldn't sleep then uh, this is again something i tried i mean i'm not a you know i can't tell for sure or anything i was eating 99% uh, dark chocolate just one piece it's very hard to eat but i i could eat that and sleep so i i whenever i was feeling sleepless uh, i was eating this especially you know night before the exam and all uh, so this actually worked it, it relaxed me then i did some google search and i found it does help some in some way but it's not proven anywhere so these kind of things i used to do when i used to eat uh, you know fruit uh, uh, when i was feeling very weak physically those things i could actually feel that these are actually working because when you are in your normal life and then somebody is telling you you should do yoga you should meditate you should exercise we don't really see the change so we feel it's very unimportant but during that very stressful time i could see the results myself so that is really helpful then again of course my parents were really supportive so i i was staying in my house and my parents were very very supportive they were literally there to help me 
so that was again you know in in one way i feel that is very privileged to say because i was staying in my home and preparing so and then they were very understanding so that is there and uh, uh, so i just don't want to tell like you know you have to find your family seek support in family seek support from any human who has the you know that empathy and compassion to help you when you are suffering मैम मैम ड्यूरिंग योर प्रिपरेशन मैम डिड यू एवर मैम आई मीन रिग्रेट योर डिसीजन लाइक क्विटिंग जॉब एंड गोइंग थ्रू दिस प्रोसेस मैम या गॉड वाज क्रेडिटेड एवरी डे आफ्टर नॉट क्लियरिंग फिल्म्स हैविंग सेल्फ आई कम टू द क्लब सो सी माय किड्स आई हैव अपीयर्ड फॉर एनी कॉम्पिटिटिव एक्सेस एंड आई हैड अ गुड जॉब इन टाटा एंड आई वाज वर्किंग फॉर 1 ईयर बट I really hated my job. I I just wanted to prepare for civil service. I just went for the job to just to see how corporate life. Is. I just wanted to see how it is. But um, I used to read it though because you know our friends will be successful. You know, my friends are in Microsoft, Google, or at Amazon, mm-hmm. going for MS. Then I am sitting here and preparing. Uh, so it is very natural to feel like you made the wrong choice. Yeah, man. Because everybody is just doing MBA, masters, or you no, know, going for good package. Something it feels something missing, man. See, there's one thing. See, your uh, you know why you choose civil service is very important. So for me, after failing prelims, I was watching Nirbhuma Rao's videos, and then I got so you know I got so obsessed by the nature of the job that. Diplomat is doing for the country. I was so obsessed by the work that we are doing, the impact that a diplomat is making. I just got exposed to a whole new world uh, where there are like so much things that I can do as a diplomat. Then I was obsessed by this idea that I want to be a diplomat. If not by this, I'll you know somehow join United Nations somehow when you know I don't even know when or how, but I really wanted to be a diplomat. so even if i am regretting the decision or even if i am doubting myself i had no other choice i have to become a diplomat and clearing this exam is the only way i can do this so this was there in the back of my mind and the first thing when i got the rank the first thing that came to my mind is oh, oh my god i'll get ifs because i don't care rest of the things does not make sense i'm getting ifs i have exam for ifs that's all so if you want your Reports of service. If it is IAS, you want to be an IAS. If you want to define yourself as an IAS officer, you want to you identify yourself as an IAS officer and do something. You know, my, I had a friend. I have a friend. I we both prepare together. So in you know, she, her ambition was to be an IAS officer and work in a remotest place in the country. Like she had kept jargon as her second option because she wanted to go there and she wanted to bring government to the people. Familiarize them with the concept that government exists. Government is there for the people. So she was very, very passionate about. It. She still is passionate about it. So she don't have a choice. She she has to become that IAS officer and bring government to the people. Then only you know. Then only she will be at peace. So like that, if you are very, very passionate about the job you are going to do after this exam, then that will give you the you know that you know that motivation to go ahead. I think many people have already said the same. I just put it in my own words. That's all. Ma'am, thank you. Ma'am, thank you. Ma'am, how did you improve your uh, writing skills? Uh, how did you analyze the answer after you have written it? Uh, uh, I I really believe that after these films, I was working as a content writer. So every day I used to write some three thousand words. this immensely uh, articulation skills and my presentation um so it was one thing that you know that in unintentionally it improved my writing then uh, i i used to send my answers to vendors once in a while other than that what i used to do that so after prelims i'll tell you what happened two three months i was being devdas uh, and uh, crying and all those things then i went for that goa trip as i told and then i came back and then you know once you are not studying for 2 3 months uh, in my case i really felt bored and then i decided i have to study then i did the op- uh, optional paper too uh, in 2 to 3 months i did that and i also did uh, gs3 
and essay i wrote few essays and got these corrected since this ds paper what i did was in my institute they were offering mains test series so think thinking that i am clearing prelim i had already enrolled for the test series so i just studied ds3 attempted those um, sectional while i was that in that day of the schedule itself attempted that ds papers three papers i wrote two sectionals and one full test essay also i wrote uh, two sets of essays i wrote so this was there uh, so uh, somehow my essay and gs3 felt like uh, somewhat done paper one of anthropology i had already finished before prelims so between january to march i was doing paper two of anthropology then afterwards i was again preparing for prelims but then exam got postponed so then my friend told she is enrolling for forum ias gs test series so why don't you do one thing we'll both study together we'll finish gs and you write the test on your own he will get it corrected uh, so i can look into the look into her paper and analyze my own paper so this is what we decided uh, then along with this we also started writing anthropology so anthropology papers we used to exchange like i used to send my paper to her and she used to send hers to me then we used to re- go through it and uh, send voice notes to each other explaining what could have been there so this is one thing. second this ds paper her paper got corrected i used to take her paper and then i used to you know see it how it was done then i used to go through my own papers and i was again uh, you know self correcting i was telling myself my intro is bad my conclusion is bad basically i was telling everything in my paper was bad but um, you know one thing i understand is you know if you are being uh, like if, if you are a very uh, you know uh, like you know if you assess yourself below than what you are at there is always this uh, urge to better yourself even if somebody is telling you are good then you feel like becoming very good so you start pushing yourself but there is again the catch that the catch will be your mental health will be uh, you know a disaster uh but if you are able to manage that mental health uh, along with this ability to push forward and not settling um, by thinking that okay you have become good at this because the moment you settle uh, there you are losing your potential to improve so this way i used to go through my papers and occasionally i used to send them to seniors and you know have them look at it and during prelims means gap again uh, after getting each paper corrected i used to i used to like disturb my mentor a lot every time i got my paper corrected i went to my mentor i showed to him and i asked, i used to ask him how can i improve this and then he will do, uh, tell some suggestions next paper i do that then again i go to him and i ask so even he was admitting that he used to uh, he used to think why this girl is coming every week because most people will only go once or twice to see their mentor but i used to go every week and i used to ask him how i can improve so this slowly in- increased you know improved my answer writing uh, this is what i believe Uh, ma'am, in the process of analyzing, I also send my answers to different seniors. Uh, what happened that different seniors give different opinions about the answer, and in the process of self-analyzing the answer, sometimes it happened that uh, I don't believe, or there's an insecurity that I am uh, a, a beginner or a moderate level preparation is there. So, am I thinking in the proper line or not? see the thing is when you are sending it to so many different vendors then that will be like you know too many uh, too many cooks will doing the when i am telling i am sending it to vendors i am sending it to those people who know me very well and who have seen my papers like i, I used to send to maximum two or three people why two three people you know some people may not be good in that particular subject for those particular subject i have to send it to someone so other than that i was relying only two people so they used to uh, occasionally take my papers and tell me suggestions but they know me since i am preparing since they want they know me uh, so they were able to get so the r- right kind of mentor you need and persistently you have to you know go to the same person and ma'am from where to get the right person ha huh? where to get where, from where to get that right person i think that is destiny and <laughs> from where did they, you got the right person Exactly. Yes, I mentioned the forum. Test series. I mean, I I enrolled in Trivandrum. I learned, and uh, like you know, I got a mentor. Uh, you know, his name is Shahid Sir. That was his first mentoring ever. He he was writing mains until then, so he decided to do mentorship. That was his first batch, and I was the only one who kept in touch with him, and I was the only one who cleared uh, from his mentorship group. Then uh, there was this guy who helped me with Anto, like who had given. Attempts. Uh, so he was there, Srijit. So this this person also I found 
who you know it like i just can say this destiny was i was just looking for someone who was preparing for andro then i accidentally came to know his name and i got his number and i called and he was really helpful. so i i can't really tell you how to find a good mentor i'm very sorry are it you can uh, one thing like you can refer to the proper topic to see the structuring of the answer and once you get your self and i align to it you can refer to any mentor like good mentor why is any other question you have ma'am ma'am ma how to eliminate wrong option in the prelims because uh, with lim because nowadays we only able to do 30 or 40 question at max what about rest question how to eliminate them how to maximize how to analyze previous question so see i think i have big when it comes to prelims and someone is asking so see uh, prelims what we can do is you know it's like a game of taking risk and a game of accuracy so what i used to do that i used to solve uh, at least some 6000 to 8000 questions all together before prelims mocks i used to solve like not mocks like questions in number 6000 to 8000 i used to solve and suppose i am doing a 100 question set like you said there will be only 40 questions where uh, there will, that i will be pretty much sure. 30 to 40 questions at max rest of the questions 50 50 we will be doing some no then we will be some will be gut feeling some we will do some sorts of elimination so i used to analyze the pattern in which i was making mistakes so 50 50 i am getting at least 50% correct that i don't know i believe it is luck but someone told me that is again somehow your knowledge at some level in your subconscious is working that is why you are making 50 50 correct in at least 50% so that is a very uh, you know prime factor getting this 50 50 questions correct uh, for at least 50 to 60% of the 50 50 questions you are attending is very important uh, then some question you know by fluke or some reason you will be getting correct so this is one way of analyzing the paper another very important way of analyzing the paper is uh, looking uh, at the mistakes and dividing it into four categories and little mistakes factual mistakes um, and uh, silly mistakes and uh, one more was there revision mistakes so uh, so i used to do this exercise in mock papers and this helped me uh, reach a point where i am getting very high scores in mocks and then slowly slowly like you know in actual papers also i was getting marks so i'll tell you how so factual mistake means the question paper is having supposed two statements but one statement we know two statement second statement is something we are not even aware of we have not even heard anywhere let on it is not like you cannot recollect it you have not heard of it it is a completely new thing and the options are like one only two only one and two only neither one neither two so in this particular case you will be knowing one statement so that means this question automatically became 50 50 so you have to attempt this question but you will you, you will be able to take the risk you you will have to take the risk so suppose this question you got it wrong so this will be a factual error or some question you see you are very familiar you have a gut feeling it is right it is a pure factual question the poor family organism they are asking from which state it is found and then you are uh, you know giving one answer and then that might go wrong that is again a factual mistake then second case is analytical or conceptual understanding that is about there is a question based on uh, balance of payment but that is not a direct question or there is a question on near or rear these will need your conceptual understanding and if your understanding is wrong the way you think will be wrong then the answer you get will be wrong so this will be a conceptual mistake then there will be revision mistake like uh, you are not able to recollect when this uh, first bank of independence happened or uh, you know those kind of things that you are able unable to you know you are unable to uh, recollect or you are recollecting it wrongly you have marked one thing then you are looking at the key and you are like oh this was here suppose it was a provision from your uh, act of 1935 but you thought it, that was there in act of 1919 you might have recollected it wrongly you might have studied it wrongly but it came from a source that is there in your material primary source that is a revision mistake then there is silly mistake that is my category i make uh, you know i read incorrect as correct i read if there is not in the question i will not read it 
uh, I will be very careless. I will mark A instead of B. Then only by going through the answer key, I will notice this. So this is uh, again silly mistake. This is really conclude. So I silly mistakes. So silly mistakes, revision mistakes, conceptual mistakes. If you avoid these three, then your mock mark will obviously increase. If you are making mistakes in these three categories, this is the reason why we are getting less marks. So uh, we have to be very cautious. We have to go back and revise. We have to study, re-study those portions that is, uh, the, you know, where your conceptual understanding is wrong. Then silly mistakes, you have to be very, very careful while dealing with the paper. Uh, so if you remove these three mistakes, your marks are bound to increase. And this applies to the uh, actual UPC paper as well. Most of the people, they are not clearing is because they are getting uh, mistakes in polity part or economy part of, of the questions that they could have solved. Suppose you are making 10 mistakes in that category. Then that is the reason why you are not clearing. It is not because uh, you couldn't handle the, you know, the new questions or the obscure questions. Those are like, the, they, those everybody is handling in the same manner. But if your fundamentals are strong, not strong, you will be losing out in the 30 questions you thought you got it right. Then you will make 10 mistakes, then you are out of the process. Ma'am, 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 myself, Mahesh, ma'am, ma'am, after reading any topic or anything, ma'am, I'm not able to put it on the paper, ma'am, exact what I've read. And some then, questions, uh, some, some vocabulary I'm not understanding, ma'am, in previous or memes. You see, if you see, if you are under, not understanding, you have to Google those words and find out the meaning. And you, on top of the word, you can write what it means. Just put that extra work, just put that extra effort, like that, suppose you are reading, suppose in one uh, paragraph and you're reading it and you think that you are someone who is unable to recollect things you read one small paragraph suppose there are four sentences you put your hand on top of that four sentences then you close your eyes to try to recollect what you have just read so slowly slowly your ability to recollect will slowly increase well, thank okay. you ma'am ma'am thank yes. you ma um, uh, my, uh, my question is regarding anthropology ma'am so yeah. how should i go about in anthropology like which topic should i start first in paper one and paper two like uh, should i start go with uh, physical or social cultural then theories or how it is like that and second question is are there any important topics which i should focus more in both the papers and the third question is like how much time did it take for you ma'am to make notes like complete uh, this paper one and paper two and then the fourth question is when did you start answer writing like after immediately uh, uh, completing the topic or the whole paper itself? This question will be indirectly uh, checking my memory as well, I guess. <laughs> so, I think first question is where I should, uh, where you should start. So if you are from a biology background, you can start with physical anthropology or if you don't have any such preferences, you can start with, but it's a bit tri tricky to start with theories, uh, but you can start with Vadia and Pandey, uh, starting with classical can do theories first and then do social cultural anthropology point one till five and then go for physical anthropology then you can go for archaeology then okay. you can go for so that is the first question um the second Any question is topics i'll try to recollect i'll also check my memory i'm not really studying these days so see in my case no i used to give importance to every topic because you know I used to jinx this, these things like I will leave one topic for university exam. They will ask questions from only that topic. This used to be my, my biggest nightmare. So I gave importance to all the topics. But uh, at the same time, there are some questions that will continuously like repeat. Like if they ask about Narmada man once, next year they'll be asking about Rama Pitakas and next year they'll ask about Shiva Pitakas. Then they will again ask about Narmada man. Like that, there are some topics from which definitely there will be some questions. This you can identify by analyzing the previous year questions thoroughly. But this you can do this exercise after studying everything. Like make what's for the words, all the keywords in the syllabus. Then you go through the previous year question by, you know, take say one week before the exam. That time you can, you know, you know, shortlist a few uh, areas from which questions will come. This you will be able to do. I'm definitely fully prepared you will be able to do. That is the second thing. Then the third question I'm, I'll try to recollect again. Okay. Uh, Regarding uh, time, how much time did you take to complete the each topic like paper one and paper two, and also each topic within the paper? 
yes yes answer writing is the fourth question okay so uh, actually my my case is not an idea because uh, i i took so much time to learn uh, like initially i started with june and uh, i really i still don't know what i was doing because soon till december i was doing something but the major issue was that i did not know how to study like i was reading so much i was making notes but they were completely useless i couldn't understand what i was doing because the vendor who told who will help me he was doing uh, who, he was preparing for his mains so i did not want to disturb him so from june till december i was just uh, roaming around wasting my time but i was studying something so i was reading something i was trying to understand something i was making notes from peena the from brain tree from vivek basne's handwritten notes his textbook everywhere i was uh, reading these and making notes i read tata committee uh, then uh, i also read nadim hasnain but uh, nothing really came out of it uh, but i was reading so this is a six months but you can't count these six months then in the month of january my mentor was back after giving me so then he told me you can do archaeology like this blah 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 then i did archaeology i made some notes and kept and i showed it to him he said it's really good so my archaeology part was done for real only that archaeology part was done. then thank god they postponed the exam prelims then i got from june till i think i got from may june july three months i got in these three months i properly finished paper one paper one was completely over i made all the notes and i practiced answers by writing in the team andro group in telegram channel they had a free initiative so every day we used to write and um, ka, you know uh, share copies <laughs> this i did before the first prelims my paper one was done again paper two was a nightmare for me but again in three months january february march i did paper two and i made notes and kept again when they post on the exam again may june july in three these three months again i took a paper one and paper two and i back edition see this i was able to do because i had the liberty of time mm-hmm. and i did in my second attempt so i had that three years of time so over the period see i was continuing preparing for andro so i cannot tell you like i finished it in two months or three months like that in my case i cannot tell like that then answer writing i started uh, only after a few months like in the initial first six months once in a while i used to write to my vendor and he would tell you have lot to work on but he did not tell specifically what because he was busy with his mm, exams but after december uh, i had already done the preliminary readings then uh, while doing this archaeology i used to write answers for archaeology that is when i actually started writing answers okay thank you guys any other doubt you have till why mom how to analyze mom how to analyze pre- prelims very very sir question last, last two question then we conclude this session yes right go ahead what did what was the question how to analyze prelims previous year question is it prelims revision or prelims previous year questions revision what, what is the question prelims analyze pre, prelims question. prelims questions so see uh, in my case, uh, uh, i have very short memory so every year if i am taking prelims questions it looks very new i'm like oh, what is this question i have not even seen this question before so in my case i used to just do these papers uh, when this exam is closed like the last 10 days every day i'll be doing one of these questions 2013 14 15 16 like that i used to do then i used to then look into the questions uh, and see how much mistakes i made why i made mistakes what you know all those things i used to do that is one part that is in in the term in the uh, in the like an exercise i used to do that other than that i used to sit with the paper so after i do this exercise where i do to, i take two hours solve the paper and look what i made mistake then i used to take the paper but those were very recent papers like if i'm giving 2019 paper 2020 paper i'll take 2018 and 2019 or maybe 2017 as well then i will minutely look into each of the questions why they are asking this question uh, you know is there any repetition then i could find some interlinkages and then i used to make my own uh, you know insights or maybe they will ask this maybe they will ask that but none of this really came i mean they did not really ask anything like i predicted but uh, i used to think in all the sense and keep this was what i was doing and then i used to look into the options like how they are putting this wrong options like what statements they are using to make it look wrong those kind of analysis i used to do in the paper so it was more about analyzing the previous paper than uh, you know revising the paper because the no question is repeating as such very few questions are repeating right last question so, good evening ma'am 
mama madite and my question is uh, given the fact there is so much resources present on the internet how do we segregate the resources into a, a sustainable one okay actually that's a very so what i did was that i disciplined myself like i told myself i i only need one book for prelims like one subject one book that was my rule and i did not break it i if i am refer to one book for one particular subject that was it. like if it is lakshmi gan for quality it's only lakshmi gan i'm not doing anything else again compilation i did pt365 only so i i only stick to pt365 i did not take a peek into anything else because then i will get that fomo so this was one rule and when it comes to mains again so current affairs i was relying more on my my handwritten mains notes that i took from rao dns because i had that trust in me that i am reading newspaper every day and i am making notes so i must have covered anything and this rao dns they are covering hindu and indian express uh, so this much i have covered this is this is what humanly possible to cover so i did not do the mains 365 because that would have given an additional headache during prelims and mains so i didn't do the prelims mains 365 but i went through the mains 365 and if at all one or two topics that i have not even heard of it's still there in the mains 365 then i used to take you know go through that and make a very short note and so this was again the second thing that i did i only trusted uh, the sources i hand picked the sources and i only referred that then um, when it comes to that gs mains uh, i found that junior material very useful i went through the book and i found it very useful so i decided to keep that as an encyclopedia i did not do the book cover to cover but i i used that an encyclopedia like whatever topic i couldn't find uh, you know material like ngo sc it is very very hard to find content anywhere so for those topics i simply relied on that book i just store the paper and use it as my note for gs2 so this, this is how i was doing uh, you know this kind of thing then for some topics like you know world history and all i did not even rely on any material i just watched short videos in youtube uh, explaining this uh, world history events then they themselves will sometimes have pre- pre- you know that pre- pdf presentation where they'll say in bad significance i was simply dividing subheadings and uh, putting content into that and um, like i said i was uh, doing that forum test series so that answer keys are al- already there so from there also i used to get content so like this i used to hand pick the content and once i get content from one source i am only using that i'm not adding anything extra to into it like i have a note for edition that is more than enough no need to add more points from this point this much content whatever mark i am getting i only need that i used to tell myself that i used to restrict myself so guys we are ending the session here so thank you so much soja for your valuable time and thanks to all of you for for your patience and presence and i want to make an announcement like on uh, 30th august we have another session with the uh, kushal jain only the next 40 so in case you have any other doubt left you can ask on that day another thing is recorded video will be provided to all so that you can revisit your doubt whatever the roja has informed or conveyed to you and once again roja thank you so much thank you for um, fighting me for the session because it's a pleasure to talk there the doubts because i interacted with the top uh, so i i was able to some used to those who have asked questions i trying to be uh, very honest and was giving uh, you know relatable and i hope it was link this session all right bye bye all right thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am get out of the cycle and get into the service भाई जब भागोगे ना ऐसे दबा के और ऐसे डायरेक्शन में भागोगे जहां कोई नहीं भाग रहा और तुम जैसा भाग नहीं पा रहा क्योंकि देख के डर रहे हैं कि यार ऐसा भागूंगा तो गिर जाऊंगा स्टेबिलिटी नहीं मिल रही तब ऐसी सक्सेस मिलेगी जितना वो लोग पूरे लाइफ में नहीं आपको पता चलेगा आप तीन साल में